when it comes to the Legend of Zelda series, dungeons are often seen as the highlight. Prior to the two most recent Zelda games, dungeons made up the bulk of the main gameplay loop. Most Zelda dungeons are revered for their intricate maze-like design, but on the other hand, there are several dungeons that have gone down in infamy among the Zelda community. Dungeons that have had players stuck for days or even weeks, and some that have made players quit the game entirely. This begs the question, what is the most hated Zelda dungeon? Before we get started, make sure to leave a comment about which Zelda dungeon you think is the most hated. The first one that comes to a lot of people's minds is the Water Temple from Ocarina of Time. The Nintendo 64 version, in particular, boggled the minds of many kids in the late 90s. So what is it about the Water Temple that people hate? For one, on the N64, switching the Iron Boots item on and off needed to be done by pausing the game and going to the equip screen. The Iron Boots let the player sink down into the water, which needs to be done constantly during the dungeon. So this can be extremely tedious for players to have to do it over and over. If you perform this dungeon perfectly, you'll have to pause the game roughly 30 times. So just imagine if you happen to get lost and don't know where to go. You could be looking at pausing the game and interrupting your gameplay upwards of 50 times just to be able to sink and rise back up from the water. Another annoying part is raising and lowering the water in the dungeon. This has to be done in three specific locations for each level of water you want to raise. So on top of understanding which level of water you need to solve a particular puzzle, you need to remember where each area is to change that level of water. You also need to play Zelda's Lullaby to initiate the raising or lowering of the water, so another item to equip and a small cutscene that you have to sit through each time. Lastly, two small keys in particular were very easy to miss in the dungeon. One key where you have to go back to the bottom floor when the water is at mid-level and revisit an area with a crack in the wall that needs to be bombed so you can pass through. And most notably, a small area beneath the central pillar that is extremely easy to miss if you're not paying attention. On top of all of this, the design of the dungeon allows players to go pretty deep into it before they reach a point where they realize they are short one small key, which makes for even more backtracking. Thankfully, in the 3DS version, a lot of these issues were all but completely fixed. The water level areas are easy to find, the iron boots can be equipped on and off without pausing, and they made the central pillar small key a lot more noticeable with how the camera shows the pathway opening up. While the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time may be the most infamous, I don't think it's the most hated. Many of us persevered through it and enjoyed Ocarina of Time, and it is considered one of the greatest games of all time. The Water Temple's difficulty was probably amplified back in the 90s just due to how new 3D games were. Players weren't as used to navigating a puzzle box in three dimensions. So the hate it gets is mostly out of nostalgia more than actual difficulty or annoyance by today's standards. I highly doubt most new players going into Ocarina of Time would have as much trouble as those who grew up in the 90s, assuming they're at least somewhat well versed in 3D games. So what if we looked at more recent Zelda games like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? For those dungeons, I think the hate would just come from how underwhelming they are. After games like Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, dungeons had the expectations of being large labyrinths that take at least an hour to complete. Most of the Divine Beasts and the Temples in Tears of the Kingdom could be completed in 20 minutes or so, and even less in some cases. The newer dungeons are also kind of lacking in aesthetics. The Water Temple in Tears of the Kingdom being arguably the most offensive in terms of a boring aesthetic and a laughably simple layout but I don't think these are the most hated either. I could go on about some dungeons that get a little bit of hate here and there. I could talk about the Ice Palace from A Link to the Past, with how annoying it is to travel through it, and even something as simple as going up a set of stairs can be incredibly tough with how slippery the floor is. Or I could talk about how confusing and intimidating the Great Bay Temple is from Majora's Mask, with its complex system of water pipes and currents, while trying to find incredibly well-hidden stray fairies, 
all being on a time limit to boot. Or even the Forsaken Fortress, which forces you to be stealthy and takes away your sword right at the start of the game. But I think there is one dungeon that encapsulates what is disliked about a Zelda dungeon better than any other. A dungeon that is brought up and complained about nearly any time this particular Zelda game is brought up without fail. A dungeon so disliked, they have never tried to make one like it again. That dungeon is the Temple of the Ocean King from Phantom Hourglass. Given that Phantom Hourglass is in the top half of best-selling Zelda games, I'm surprised we don't hear about it more often, but maybe we're all just trying to suppress this terrible memory. I would not be surprised at all if this dungeon had the highest percentage of people give up on the game more than any other dungeon has in another Zelda game. So what is it about the Temple of the Ocean King that's so bad? Well, for starters, you're on a time limit. The temple will drain your health and kill you by just existing in it. So the Phantom Hourglass item keeps you alive, but only for a certain amount of time. Now the time limit is pretty generous, but you definitely can't play too loosely or it will catch up to you. The dungeon is nice enough to give you some safe zones where your time doesn't expire, but the vast majority of this dungeon is going to be draining your time. You might say a time limit isn't so bad, we did have the same time pressure in Majora's Mask. Well, how about stealth on top of it? That's right, did you love Forsaken Fortress? Well, here's a whole dungeon where you have to be stealthy. The phantoms that patrol this dungeon will chase you down and basically kill you in one hit. If you get caught, it's gonna reset you to the start of the room. And not only that, it's gonna drain some of your time too. There's also these little annoying eye creatures that will alert the phantoms to your location. And oh yeah, these phantoms are completely unkillable. A lot of the puzzles involve you carrying around big items that leave you completely defenseless, so you better time things really well if you want to be successful. If you didn't think avoiding all those patrolling phantoms was enough stealth for you, some of the levels of this dungeon have floors that make noise and alert the phantoms if you don't move slow enough. Okay, okay, so stealth in a time limit. It's not great, but it's not that bad, right? Well, what if I told you you had to do this dungeon five times? That's right, five times. Each time you do this dungeon, you have to redo many of the sections over again. Now granted, some of your new items that you obtain will eventually open up shortcuts, and there is a checkpoint, but every floor has to be done multiple times. Why do we have to keep doing this dungeon? Well, it's because all of the sea charts that help you progress through the rest of the game are all in the Temple of the Ocean King. There's invisible bridges, moving platforms, puzzle solutions being gated by flames if you happen to have a phantom spot you. Oh yeah, and the music sucks too. You've probably been half listening to it in the background this whole time, but really listen to how generic and boring it sounds. The Zelda series is known for having some of the best music ever in video games. And don't get me wrong, Phantom Hourglass has a few bangers, but this dungeon theme is downright awful. Now, one of the few redeemable aspects of this dungeon is that when you do obtain the Phantom Sword at the end of the game, you can finally slay all of those phantoms. And I have to admit, it does feel pretty good. The Temple of the Ocean King is such a central part of the game that it ruins what would otherwise be a very solid Zelda handheld title. Usually, if you dislike one particular dungeon in a Zelda game, since it makes up such a small portion of it, it doesn't really ruin it. But unfortunately, in the case of Phantom Hourglass, I'm always far more hesitant to play it because of the infamous Temple of the Ocean King. 